Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to go over how you can recreate Apple TV with React. Now right here you can see this little application that I made up. Um, it mimics exactly what Apple has on their um, Apple TV homepage. So you can see that as you scroll over, um, we have all these different icon cards. And when you scroll over them, um, it shows you a little title um, as well as a on hover effect that scales up the image. So you hover over, it's going to show you the title of that particular app. Scale up the image a little bit and add some style um, with a little box shadow right here so you have an idea of what you're, what you're about to select. Um, at the top right here, we also have a little highlight row um, that is going to control what kind of media is shown in this little scrollable region right here with the different types of media content that we had. So why don't we go ahead and demonstrate that. So the one that is initially set is TV, and you can see that we have a bunch of different TV shows right here that you can scroll through. The same little hover effect applies where you scale up the image a little bit, add a little bit of a box shadow effect, and then show that... Um, name of the specific type of show that we're that we're hovering over. Now, um, the cool thing about this that we're going to set up together is when you click on it, we're actually going to have on click handler. So when you click it, it's going to show you a little trailer for that specific type of media that you're looking at. So for this one, um, it's Devilman Crybaby, which is a really good anime. You should definitely check it out if you haven't seen it before. But um, right here, you can see a little trailer. Get a get a taste and see if you want to watch that or not. Um, so this scrollable region is going to render some custom content based on whatever we touch in this highlight row right here. So why don't we click movies. You can see that the same thing shows up a little bit of different card style, same on hover effect and when you click on one um, you're gonna see another trailer as well for that. So this one um, in particular is Hereditary. Very good horror movie, you haven't seen it. Um, the guy who does Hereditary, he's actually coming out with a new movie called Midsummer. Um, that you guys should definitely check out the trailer for. It looks really cool. It's by um, A24 Pictures again, so I'm sure it's going to be awesome. They have a lot of artsy um, thriller and horror movies. Um, so the next one we have is some apps. So uh, these are just some popular apps, right? Um, no on-click handler for this. Nothing happens when you click it. And then we have music. So these are some of my favorite anime openings, actually, um, that you know I've just listened to to date. So we can go and click... Uh, let's see the my or the rising shield hero one. And so when you click on it, it'll show you um, basically that opening for the um, specific show, so you can kind of get a glimpse of it and see the opening animation in the song. Okay, and then the last one we have is photos. This is just a background. Um, I actually didn't take the time to position this correctly based on the window size and stuff like that. So it's just this ugly little photos image. Um, okay, so that kind of goes over that specific portion of the application. And then the last portion is when you click on any of these cards, you're going to see um, right now we have a little bit of um, uh, an animation transition set in place. So I'm going to click these cards, and based on the position that these cards are in in the window, they're either going to go to one of the four corners of the screen. So why don't we click in and see what happens there. So you can see they kind of dispersed in opposite directions to different corners of the screen. Um, you can see that we clicked the ESPN one, um, and so it's showing us ESPN right here. I'm going to show you how to dynamically do that with React. Really easy. Um, and so this is just going to be a login page that mimics what Netflix has on their um, you know, user profile login page whenever you first open up that app. So same thing. Um, you scroll over. It shows you a little hover effect and some text, and when you click on it, it's going to say thank you for logging in. Perfect. So we just have a little bit of an idea that, you know, event was a dispatch right there. And then we have a little back arrow button to kind of bring us back and we can do that all over again. So this is going to be a very simple application, um, but it does look pretty neat. Um, it's pretty cool to kind of see how Apple TV does things. And I'll give you guys an idea on how they achieved, um, you know, that beautiful interface that they have for, for their product. I'm also really excited to show you guys this. Um, this is kind of a, it's been a really fun project for me because I've actually put little bits and pieces of me into it um, for the different type of media that we rendered here. So some of these um, shows and music and movies that are here in the slider, they're actually some of my favorite shows in anime and such, uh, you know, uh, like to date. So I'm really excited to kind of show you guys with that. Um, at the very least, you know, you'll have a, 
arsenal of movie trailers and uh, music openings that you guys can look through and see if anything catches your interest. I think there's some really good um, thriller, horror, um, action shows here, so I think you guys will really like that. And these uh, openings right here that we have, they're actually really good too. I think you guys will enjoy that if you're um, interested in anime and just TV and movie in general. So, okay, so that is going to about wrap it up for our little demonstration. So why don't we jump over and start coding? So first thing that we're going to want to do is I actually have a little Git repository set up that just has a little bit of the data structures that we need. Um, so there's a little bit of a blueprint that I want us to work off of um, as our initial starting point for this because I did actually have to put together some images and resources and text and stuff like that, some data for us to use. Um, for all those different cards that you saw at the very beginning. So I thought the easiest way to do that was to create um, a little starting repository for us for this for this tutorial series. So I'm going to put a link to this in the description, but we're basically just going to go to this link. You're going to either download the zip or you can use git to clone the repository. So I'm going to use git. I'm going to open up my terminal, um, you know, wherever you want. Right now I'm in my um, desktop and we're just going to simply run git clone clone this repository so we have a starting point that we can work off. And then when that um, git clone finishes, what we're going to do is we're going to cd into our Apple TV um, starter. And then we're also going to do npm install because if you run npm start right here, it's going to give you this warning message because we actually haven't installed any of the dependencies and it doesn't know how to handle um, that script command. So we're going to do npm install so that we can get all of our module dependencies for this project that are listed in the package JSON file. All right. And then now that that's looking all good, let's run npm start and see what we get. Okay. And after you run npm start, you should just see a browser open up. Um, and all it says is hello world. So nothing too crazy right now, but this is a perfect starting place for us to um, begin uh, writing some code. So let's pop on over to our terminal, or to our code editor. Next thing we're going to do is you're going to need to open up the project in whatever code editor you want to use. Right now I'm using um, IntelliJ Ultimate Edition, and it's actually really cool. Um, I would recommend you guys trying it out. Um, you can get a 30-day trial on it um, if you would like. Um, but if not, you know, just use whatever um, code editor you'd like. Visual Studio Code is also really good. I just kind of switched over to this to try this out. So the first thing that I want us to do is kind of go over, you know, what is it in this project directory that I put on Git for, for us to really start out at. So if we look in um, our package JSON file, the only thing that we're going to see is this is just a simple React app. There's no additional dependencies. We just have the create React app dependencies. And then all the default scripts. So, so that's looking good. Nothing extra there. Um, in addition to that, we just have kind of the initial blueprint for a React app. So this is looking good too. Um, you know, nothing too crazy, just the initial um, structure that it has. We have an app that just returns hello world. And then in addition to that, the stuff that I really want us to focus on is that we have um, two additional folders in our source directory. So we have a data folder and we have a res folder for our resources. Now the resources just have um, all the different categories in that media slider. Um, and it has different pictures for them. So you can see that we have pictures for all the apps. So that's looking good. Or for all the app store apps. And then we have all of the actual cards that are going to fill up the main content of the page. And then we have avatars for all the different user icons that we're going to be using for that um, mock-up login page. Then we have some movie posters. So that's looking good too. Um, we have our music pictures, so you can see that there's just a common trend, you know, it's just a bunch of pictures. And then we have last one for TV shows. Alright, perfect, so that's looking really good. Um, the resources we're just going to be using as some static content for the images that we're going to be uploading. And then if we look into our data folder, you can just see that we have a bunch of import statements, right? for those particular images in that um, resource folder. So it goes through here, it imports, uh, you know, TV shows, users, music, apps. Uh, at the top we have movies and then the app store. And then 
Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually create a data structure. So it's going to be an array of objects that's going to allow us to print out some type of caption, the type, and then as well as the, the, the image for that particular um, card. So you can think of this data structure as just being an array, and in each, each um, position in the array we have an object, and the object just pertains to um, one of the cards in the Apple TV um, application. So you can see we have the TV logo image, it shows you the TV caption, so when you hover over it you get that little TV text, and then this is going to be our, for our media slider, so when you click it, it renders different, different content. And you can see us just going through and doing that for every single type of card that we're going to have. So you have, um, you know, the FX card, so it's going to use the FX logo and then just have the FX caption. We have one for HBO Go, NBA, NBC, Prime, Verb, YouTube, and all that good stuff. Okay, so that's what we're going to start off at. And now I think we're ready to start coding. And now that we're ready to get going, what I want us to do is first just a uh, quick refresh of what these two files are doing right here for our Create React app. So the first one is just the index.js file, right? And all of this is, is this is the initial file that is called when you do npm start from the command line. So when you type in npm start and it runs that script. It looks to this file first and knows that this is going to be a React project and then it just tells the DOM to render a component called app to the screen where um, it's going to be put into a div with the element of root. And if we look into public and look at this index.html file, we can see that we have a div called root and that's where it's going to put all of our um, code that we write to show um, this app. So just wanted to quick refresh that. Um, all the content is going to go inside of this div and this is going to be a single page app because that is essentially how all React applications work. So um, let's look at our app.jsx file and this is going to be you know, the, the main container of our application. It's going to be the component that just contains all of, the, all of the code that we write for all the different pages and components and cards and layouts and all that stuff. So we're actually going to be using React Router in order to do some navigation. So I want us to install that first before we actually start coding. So we're going to open up the terminal and we're just going to install React Router and React Router DOM. And you can just click enter and we'll wait for that to finish installing. Great, so now that React Router and React Router DOM have finished installing right here, you can just type this at the um, beginning of the command line. We're going to clear and we're going to create our history file so we can actually have our own history object for our application. So let's do new JavaScript file. We're going to do history.js. We're going to do import create browser history from history. We're going to do export default create browser history. All right, perfect. And all this is going to do is just let us create that history object that React Router has to use um, for that page navigation. This is just going to create our own. So let's close that. Next thing we're going to do inside of our source folder, we're actually going to create a new folder. And this is going to create or house all of the um, pages, so the page containers for our React application. So we're going to have two different pages, so I'm going to create the pages directory right here. The first file that we create is going to be called the app page container .jsx. And then we're also going to create the main container, so this is going to have the bulk of all of our application inside of it. And this is going to be the home page. So let's do, let's actually call it home page container. That might make a little more sense. Okay, perfect. So the best way I think to start out is we should just write something pretty simple here. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's import React from React. And then we're just gonna create a functional component. And we're just going to return a div and we'll say app page starts here. 
And then we'll do export default app page container. All right, perfect. Now we're going to do something basically exactly the same on the home page container. So just copy and paste that over. All right, and then we're going to import those those components in our app.jsx file. And then we're also going to do our React router um, import statements here. So we're going to import the history object, and then we're going to get some um, different modules from React router DOMs. All right, perfect. And that should be enough to get us started. So this app, um, again, is the main entry point of our application. It's the one component that is going to house all of the different um, pages and JSX that we have within our application. Um, so right here we're going to actually create a little routing um, switch clause that's going to handle the different routes that we have in our application. So that home page um, route that shows all the different rows in the grid with the cards and the little scrollable region at the top. Um, and then when you click on those cards, we're going to handle a route for the actual app page. So, you know, that little login screen page. So we're just going to define that together here. So we're going to put that inside of the router tag. We're going to give it the history object so it knows how to um, do all the routing. We're going to do a switch statement. And then we're going to establish our routes for all of the different pages. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do app is going to be one path. And this is going to be the app page container. And then we'll do another route for the home page. Okay, and then we'll just write our closing router. All right, perfect. So let's save this. And what we can do here is we can test it and make sure everything is looking okay. So let's open up our terminal again and do npm start. So you can see that right here, um, the app page starts right here. And if we do slash app, oh, and you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to change the text here. So we're going to do the home page starts here. So just click home page container and then app page looks good right there. Okay, so home page, as you can see, just the default URL is going to show the home page. So we created a component for that. And we go to slash app in the um, URL. It's going to show us the app page. So this is going to be the page for the individual application cards when you click on one. Okay, so now that we kind of have our initial structure set up with React Router and the two different pages that we're going to create, let's go ahead and start to create some of the components that are going to actually be the little wrappers um, and the things that we reuse for all the different cards um, with the images. Okay, so we are going to create a new folder in here. It's going to be called cards. So these are going to be the image cards that we have, right, when you hover over them and it shows that text and does that scaling effect. So we're going to do one that's called captioncard.jsx. And now we're going to start coding. So let's import React. And we're going to be using use state so that new um, functions that React gave us in the most recent update. So we're going to do use state and fragment. And we're going to create our caption card um, functional class. And we're going to destructure some props that we know we're going to use. So we're going to be using caption, class name, image, and the on click event. All right, what we want to do is we want to set our, um, we want to create some state for the hovered effect. So I'm going to do that er, array destructuring here. So let's do this. And we're going to set the initial value or the initial state to false. Just write return there so it goes away and stops complaining. Okay, so what do we do right here? Um, I'm going to go over this a little more in depth in some slides later, but basically what this does is we use um, the new method called useState, and what this does is it takes in one parameter for the initial state, and when you call this method, it returns two things um, in the form of an array. 
So we have the actual property for whatever we call it for our state and then a method to actually update that state in some way. So, you know, you can um, set a hover effect, for instance, like display or hide um, or when clicked or not clicked, something like that. Um, and I use the little brackets here in order to destructure those values so it comes out um, an array like this, right? So let me write this for you. So you have the actual um, object or whatever it is. In this case, it's just going to be um, a boolean. So we can write um, a boolean variable. And then the next thing is a function that's returned to us, right? Um, and that's what the method returns. It's an array with two values for the variable and the function. And so you can use this um, destructuring syntax for arrays that is new with um, ES6. And we can just set that um, equal to their own values right here. So you have the hovered, which equals the variable, and then the set hovered, which is going to be a function that we use together. Okay, so I hope that makes a little sense. I think it will when we go on and I explain it a little more in depth in some slides. So let's use the fragment syntax right here because we don't want to have a outer div. Um, that's what the fragments use. It's if you don't want to have a or a wrap in div around the content that you that you create, unless you create adjacent. Um, HTML tag. So we're going to have a div. Now let's do class name. So it's going to equal whatever the class name is. And do on click. It's going to equal whatever um, the on click is that we pass it. It's going to have some custom style. It's going to um, just take in the background image. So this is going to set the actual card for whatever we need it to be. It's going to take in the image. And then we're going to have some events. So when you enter, um, when your mouse enters this specific dimensions of the card, we want to set hovered to true because that means that it's being hovered, right? And we want it to show the caption um, when you hover over it with your mouse. And it does that little box shadow effect as well. Um, and then when your mouse leaves that area, we want to set hovered to false. Okay, let's write our equal sign right here. And then let's write our equals sign, or take that extra curly brace off right there. Okay, perfect, so it's looking good. And then let's actually have some um, text for the actual caption. So we're just gonna create a P tag. The class name is going to be card caption. And then the style is just going to be color um, is equal to so whether so if the value is hovered then we want to make the color white so the text of it white and if it's not we want it to be transparent so it just looks invisible to the user okay and that's looking good to me and then we're going to pass it the caption so whatever the text is if it needs to be hulu if it needs to be youtube netflix so on and so forth so let's get that out of the way. And then we're also going to use the default prop syntax right here um, in case a user or whoever's using this um, code later on doesn't have to set these props if they don't want to. So this is just going to um, tell React, hey, if we don't pass a value in for caption or any of these props right here, if um, someone just creates creates the component like this, then we want to set these values to some default value so that they're not just stuck with nothing. Um, you know, they're just sending in um, the component the wrong way, they're writing it the wrong way. So we want to set some default props here. So we're going to do caption, your caption, so, so they have an idea of what the caption should be. Um, class name, we're just going to equal nothing. Now we're going to do image is null, so it's just going to be a blank card. And then we're going to do on click is going to be null. Okay, and then we're going to do export default caption card. So that's something actually gets imported. Something gets returned after they call this, this app. Okay, so that's looking pretty good to me. Why don't we go on to another file and you, you'll see how this is, this is used later on. 
So next thing I want us to do, we're actually going to be using one more library. This is the, the last extra one that we're going to be using. It's called Styled Components. And what it's going to allow us to do is use some CSS for um, our React components that would otherwise be pretty hard to do if we just used um, JavaScript and CSS by themselves. Um, specifically, we're going to be adding some keyframe syntax. And sometimes you run into a little bit of trouble with that when you use React. So they created this nice little framework called styled components that we can use that'll let us inject CSS um, dynamically all inside of our JSX file um, for this wrapper that we create. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal and I'm gonna do control C and we're gonna do npm install styled components. And this is just the library we're gonna use in order to create that animation wrapper. So this is going to let us use um, that little um, library framework for creating animated React components. And then this is going to be a wrapper that does the animation effect when you click on the card and it brings it, it moves it out right and it dissolves it into the background and moves it to the nearest corner of the screen. So let's go ahead and run npm start now that that's finished just so we get our application back. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new directory called wrappers. And the reason that I called this wrappers, it might be a little confusing. Um, I can see how, you know, the name is, is a little weird. I'm going to close these files for now. Um, the wrappers are going to basically be parent components that need some extra content passed to them. For them to render inside so basically what this is going to do is we're going to have an animation wrapper there's going to be an animation parent component and the only thing that it's going to be in charge of is actually animating the content away so moving the card um, to the right side of the screen and then dissolving it away um, the content that we pass to it is actually going to be this caption card so this is going to be the the child content inside of this parent component that, we, that we're calling right now a wrapper. So why don't we go ahead and actually um, code this out and it'll make more sense when you have something in front of you. Um, I probably should have done that from the beginning. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call it animation wrapper.jsx and at the very top, let's import styled and keyframes. Now this is gonna be a React component, right? But um, with the styled components library, you actually don't even need to import React. It does that as a dependency when you um, import the library. So it does all of that for you. So we don't need to really worry about that. Um, at the very top, we're going to define some coordinates. So, so let's go ahead and define some coordinates. I'll explain what they mean in a second. So the first coordinate we're going to do is top left. Next one is going to be top right. Next one is going to be bottom left. And the next one is going to be bottom right. Okay, so these are corners basically for the different um, points or the different um, endpoints of the screen. So the different corners. So you have the top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. And these are just coordinates for, for us to use to tell the cards where to animate out to. So what's the coordinate that they should all be approaching when we click um, on a card. Now we're going to define a function called get coordinates. So this is going to get the position um, that the card should should transition out to. This is going to be a little helper method. So we're going to pass in the direction to this function and then if the direction equals top left then we're going to return the top left coordinate. And then we're just going to go through all of the different possible directions that it can be. Okay, so now what does this helper function do? So basically what this does, um, it's a really simple function. We're basically going to pass a string and that string that we pass in the direction is going to tell this component which um, direction it should animate out to. So we're either gonna pass it the top left and it says, oh, okay, so you wanna go to the top left, so we're gonna approach these coordinates. That's where I'm gonna tell this, this component to animate out to. If it's the top right, 
um, that we pass in, then it's going to say, oh, okay, I know what the top right coordinates are. Um, why don't we go this way? That's what I'm going to set the component to for, for its CSS style. So, so that's all that's going to do. Um, nothing too crazy. Now let's go ahead and define our animation um, variables. And this is going to be something we inject using the styled components library so that it knows actually how to animate this component when it's clicked. So the first animation effect we're going to do is the fade in. So when you start it, so keyframe. So when we start that application and you um, actually come back to it using the back button. So we're going to do from, we're going to define some keyframes here. It's going to transform, so it's going to start at one-fourth of its size, that's all this means, so it's going to transform, scale it to one-fourth of its size, and it's going to start at opacity zero, so at this point, um, you cannot see it. So at the first keyframe, you're not going to be able to see it, it's going to be completely invisible, and then it's going to um, iterate through all of these keyframes, and then... We're going to transform it finally to one, so it's um, initial size, like it's actual size, so just 100% of whatever its size is that we, that we set to it, and then its opacity is gonna be one, so it will be completely visible. Okay, so that's looking good to me. That's just gonna be our fade in effect, and then we're gonna do the same thing for fade out, except it's going to be pretty much the reverse in addition to injecting that that um, direction, the direction coordinates that we get back from our helper method. So why don't we do from, so this is gonna say, hey, on the first keyframe, um, we want you to transform it from scale one. So it's gonna start at its original size, and then the opacity is gonna be one, it's gonna be completely visible. And then we want you to scale it all the way down because we're transitioning to a new page and we want it to be um, shrunken down. And you transform, translate, oh, sorry, transform, and then we're going to pass in our coordinates right here like so, and then we're going to scale it, and then we're going to set the opacity to zero. Oh, sorry, I did not um, set this as a function, so this is what we're going to do, perfect. So. All this does is this is the fade out effect so we're going to basically send it in some coordinates and that's going to tell it where um, it should translate out to so where it should move to as it's scaling down and as it's um, becoming invisible because we're doing the fade out effect we want it to kind of dissolve into the background so that's all this does and don't get confused about the keyframe syntax right here that we're using all this is telling um, the style components library. Um, just so you know, this is all a part of the style components library. We're using it right here. We imported that and destructured it out. But all this is saying is um, as you're doing the animation effect um, that we're just about to finish um, setting up, in its cycle of going through all the different keyframes, right? So like in animation, you have the the keyframes, so all the different clips that an actual piece of animation goes through. So when someone like punches in an anime or a TV show or a cartoon that's made up of a bunch of keyframes, like little still images, um, photos of that particular animation kind of all spliced and then put together. Um, so you have like one keyframe where he's winding up the punch and another keyframe where his punch is moving a little more, more and more and more. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. We're saying, as you go through all these different still images um, of the animation, we want you to move it in this particular order. So you start um, for the fade out effect at completely one, it's completely visible and it's its normal size. Keyframe two, go down a little bit. Keyframe three, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, until on the final keyframe for however long the animation is, we've scaled it down to one fourth of its size and it's completely invisible. So that's all that um, is talking about. I hope that's a little more clear. And then we're going to create our actual component right here. So we're going to do const animate, and it's going to be called style.div. So now we're actually using that styled um, library that we imported. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be a div component. 
And then we're just going to set our um, CSS right here. So we're going to do position relative display inline block visibility. Again, this is just going to say, hey, is it visible or not? We're about to find out. And we're going to send it in some props. And one of the props is going to be props.animate. And if the animate value is set to true, then we know that we're trying to um, hide it. Otherwise, we're going to make the visibility visible. So as it's animating, um, we know that we want it to um, you know, go away. And then animation, because it's doing the fade out effect, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, props, we're gonna do props.animate. And then we're going to call our fade out get chords props.direction. So we're going to send in two props. One's going to be for the anime, and one's going to be the direction. And this is just doing our fade out function. Um, we created a function right here, and we're going to send in the actual direction. Um, or we're going to do the fade out function and call our helper method get coordinates. So get coordinates is going to be right here. And that is going to be sent in with our props.direction. So we're going to send in the direction. And that direction is going to get passed to the get coordinates method. And then the return of that is going to be sent to the fade out function to actually inject the coordinates into our CSS style right here. Um, so if it is animated, if, it, if the props.animate does exist, um, it's saying for us to animate it, then I want you to fade out because we only animate when you click the button. So it means, um, you know, the visibility, we should make it hidden. We should start to animate out, so start to do the dissolve. Otherwise, we want it to fade in because it's coming back to the page. Okay, so that looks good to me. And then we're going to go down here, do our default props again. So the default props we want to set... Um, animate is going to be false and then direction is just going to be set to top left and that's fine for now and then we'll do export default animate so um, the animation property is saying like we only want you to animate it when it's clicked on so that's why I, I set it to false um, I know it's a little confusing because the fade in is an animation itself but that only happens when you start the application or returning back to <coughs> to the page. So try not to get mixed up there. Okay, perfect. So now that we have that, we can actually start to use the animation wrapper um, in conjunction with one other card component that we need to do. So um, this is gonna make a lot more sense. So as you can see, this doesn't actually have any content defined in it, right? This is just basically a, a wrapper div that's going to contain some type of content within it and the div itself just animates out in a particular direction and things like that um, and shows its visibility and not. So that's what I was trying to explain earlier about the little parent and child components. It'll make a lot more sense when we do this <clears throat> when we do this final card. So stick with me just a second longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file we're going to call it appcard.jsx. And appcard.jsx is going to be for all the icon cards that we have below the highlighted row that actually, um, you know, like sets all the media in the um, scrollable row at the top. So all of the cards beneath it. So like the YouTube card and the Netflix card and Hulu and all that stuff. Those are going to be like the, the app cards. That's what we're going to call them. So let's go ahead and do our import statements at the top. So we're going to import React. We're going to do use ref, use effect, and use state. So this is really great if you aren't familiar with any of these new use methods that React introduced. They're very handy. Um, we're going to go over all of them together right now. So you should have a better idea on how to use them. And then we're going to do import animation wrapper. And then we're going to import our caption card. And then we're also going to import our history object because when you click um, the app cards, what it's going to do is it's going to take you to that separate page, right? So we need React Router for that because it's going to take you to the um, app page. So now let's define our functional component. It's going to be called app card. 
It's going to take in a couple of props. We're going to do animate, caption, image, on change, type. Okay, so now we're going to create a ref. Um, and we're going to just be using the use ref function. So it sets the initial value to null. That's just commonplace. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually send it to other values or not, but I just know that null is, is pretty standard. Um, I don't think you really need to set it to anything. It's going to do all of that on its own. Um, and so this little <coughs> variable right here is going to have a reference to the um, DOM node that we're talking about in this particular instance. And what it's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to get the window um, so the DOM window and then show us the actual um, position of the app card in relation to the window. Um, now that probably doesn't make sense at all but basically it's just going to allow us to get the, the width, the X and the Y values of the card um, in the window. So we need a X and a Y value for if it's at the top right, right? Or the top left. So it's just going to give us those coordinates. It's going to give us a reference to to where that HTML tag is in the DOM tree in the window. So we're going to have that. Then we're also going to use use state again for the direction. So we're going to have the direction and then the set direction method. So the direction variable set direction method. And then we're going to be calling use state. And this is going to be set to top right. Um, just by default, it can be whatever you want, doesn't matter. And then the next thing that we're going to do is call use effect. And use effect is um, something that they introduce that actually replaces lifecycle methods. So right now I'm just going to type all of it out. Um, and then I'll actually go over what it's doing um, in a PowerPoint um, right after this. So let's do const set dimensions. Now this is going to be a function that we define within this lifecycle method. And we're going to have a variable for the y coordinate. Um, and then we're going to do const x. So this right here, it's getting the offset to the left. So how much, how far is it um, getting pushed to the left? And if that value multiplied by 2 is less than the window dot inner width, then we know to set it to the left. If not, we know to set it to the right because it passed the halfway mark. And then we're going to call the set direction <coughs> um, set state method that we got. So this part right here. And that's all we're going to do right there. And then we're going to do set dimensions inside of use effect. And then this is a cleanup. Um, so this is going to be equivalent to component will unmount. And don't worry, I'm going to explain all of this. Um, but basically this is what's executed on component did unmount and then we're going to remove the event listener that I have set up resize and set dimensions oh and I actually need to add the event listener right here so let me go ahead and do that window.add event listener so this is going to say whenever um, a resize event occurs whenever um, the browser window is adjusted, right? Whenever you change it from bigger to small, then we want to actually trigger the set dimensions function and um, set all of these coordinates again. Okay, so let's do that. And then the only thing that we want to listen for right here is the ref. Okay, so next thing we need to do is our on click function handler. So let's define that. And we're going to say if type. So if it has a type, then we want to do the on change um, props on change. And then if it doesn't have a type, so if this isn't one of the um, media in the highlight row, if this isn't a card that's like TV shows or movies or anything like that, because those are going to have a type associated with them, then we want it to redirect to that other page, right? It's not going to change the um, it's going to navigate away to a different page. Those ones behave a little differently. And then we'll do set timeout. And we're going to do history.push. So this is going to take us to the loading screen, basically. 
and then we're going to do path name app. or this is going to take us to the app page excuse me and it's going to do the little animation effect as well so that we have an idea of um, like what was clicked here so that's why we call on change and then we're going to do um, 700 seconds so wait or not 700 seconds sorry I think um, it waits maybe like I don't know how many seven I think it's milliseconds it's not that long <laughs> basically this is just some arbitrary number I said you could probably do like a thousand two thousand however many you want I think a thousand is one second so it does it pretty fast like seven tenths of a second um, but basically it's gonna wait a second right let the animation finish up um, when we alert the parent component that this is going to be in so it's going to call that on change um, props method you can see we pass it in right here so it's going to call that and then after that's done that's going to alert the animation right blah 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 and we're going to then wait a second and go to the um, app page actually and send in some state so it's going to send in the image um, that's going to be used for the loading screen and it's going to send in the caption so it's going to give it the dynamic little <clears throat> um, app title on the login screen okay so now that we have that the last thing to do is to actually return some content here so let's go ahead and do that write our return and here is where we're going to use our wrapper class we're going to do animate is going to be set equal to animate so the prop that we sent in the ref is going to be sent to the prop that we defined in this class the direction is going to be set to the direction so the state um, the direction state variable in this class and then the class name we haven't defined any um, style or anything like that yet so don't worry about that it's going to be animated column okay so before I write any more code, um, this is all basically like coming from the props, right? So the props are gonna be sent in right here and we're gonna just keep passing them down. But this right here is the wrapper class, right? So all of this does, this animation wrapper, is it has some styled CSS in here to tell whatever content is inside of this parent class, um, like how it's supposed to animate and change the style of the content of whatever's in it. So this is the wrapper, right? It's like a little div, it's a little box. You can think of it as a box. And inside of the box um, is some content. So we're gonna have like the, the image of the card, right? And we're gonna have the caption of that specific app. And all the box is doing, so all that goes into the container for the box. And all the box is um, responsible for the animation wrapper is to just animate away in the different corners of the screen. Um, so that's what we're going to do right here. This is the um, parent-child relationship within React. So you have a parent component um, that does some stuff, whatever. And then inside of it, it renders all of the children within it. So that's what this syntax is that you're seeing here. This, um, uh, this uh, like, open caret signs and whatnot. So we're going to put the children inside of here, which is the caption card. You can have a class name of card, card small, and the on click is going to be whatever the on click function is, and the image equals the image that's sent to us, and the caption equals the caption that is sent to us. Okay, perfect. So that looks about right. We have our parent component and inside of it is the children and it does some some fanciness with it. It's going to render that content and this is just going to be the little animation box for that card. Okay, last thing to do is do app card dot default props. So what do we want the default props to be? Animate is going to be set to false. Caption, your caption image is null on change is null so no on change handler type is going to be null because it's going to be a basic card and then export default app card 
All right, great. So that's looking pretty good to me. So we finished all of our cards. Yay. And so the next thing that we probably want to work on is the, we'll do a little bit of the main, or we'll do a little bit of the homepage container so that you guys can actually see some of the stuff that we wrote coming onto the screen. And then after that, we'll actually finish the slider um, folder that we need to do and then the rest of the wrappers for some of the layout and things like that. Now, right before we start on the homepage container page to get something shown on the screen, I want to actually um, refactor a little bit of the project structure that we have right here. So create a folder called the components folder, and we're just going to put our card folder in there um, so we can move all of that. We're also going to move the pages into there, and then we're also going to move the wrappers folder into there. Okay, so next thing we're going to go to appcard.jsx. All right, make sure that that's resolved. That looks good. And then we're also going to go to the captioncard.jsx, and we're going to fix a typo that I made. Yeah, so that is my mistake. And then I think with that, we should be good to go, and we'll be ready to work on the homepage container. So what we're going to do here is this is going to be the homepage for Apple TV, and it's going to show... Um, a layout that has a bunch of rows and inside of each row is going to be a column and inside of that column is going to be our card style, right? Um, so that'll make more sense when we show it at the, the very end, but basically we're going to have five rows and inside of each of those rows is going to be five columns for each one of the app cards and then we're just going to place those inside of there. So we need to create a couple of different wrapper classes for that, so row and column, so that we can actually import the data here and display it in a nice fashion. So as you can see, apps one refers to the first row. So it's got five different cards in it. It's got the little TV logo app card, the movies app card, the app store card, music, photos, and etc. And as we go down, you can just see that we have all the different cards. So we have Hulu, FX, HBO Go, NBA, and it's simply just an image and a caption um, in this array um, object data structure. So we have an array and each one of the cards is an object with some properties that we're going to be using um, on the homepage container. Let's go ahead and go into our wrappers folder and we're going to create a new file. And this file is going to be called row.jsx. So this is going to be another um, parent component that renders some children within it. And it's just going to exist as a wrapper so that we get some um, default style um, for all the children that gets put into it. So we're going to import React like usual. We're going to make this a functional component. It's going to take in some children. It's going to take in a class name and then style. So a custom style object in case we want to um, add that in later. And all it's going to return is a div with a class name of whatever class name we give it. And then it's going to set the style object if there is a style object that we send it. And then it's going to render the children inside of this wrapping div and that should be it that's all that the row is going to do so this is really simple um, it's basically just going to be used for us to have some enclosing div right for the actual row container um, and it's just going to allow us to put columns into that row so that we can have that nice little grid looking layout um, so we're going to set the default props right here for children. And we'll just set that to null, class name, empty string, and style is an empty object. So this just gives a little more clarification on whoever is reading the code. Like, hey, um, if nothing, if I don't send in these default props, then inside of this, it's going to just be no content. So this is essentially just going to be a, an empty div, right? Because we have to actually put some content into it. But if the children is null, um, so they don't specify the the children prop right here. If they leave this out in the um, 
if they leave this out in the component declaration like this, then we know that children is going to be null, and this is basically just going to be an empty div. Um, and then you can see that the class name is just going to be an empty string, so if you don't want to pass it a class name, that's fine. And if you don't want to pass it style, it's just going to be an empty object, so nothing gets changed there. All right, perfect. So let's save that. And now we're going to create the last wrapper. It's going to be the column.jsx file. And this is going to be really simple too. So let's go ahead and create this. These are going to be the columns that go inside of our row. So let's import React. It's going to be a um, column functional component. It's going to take in the exact same props as the row. And it's going to have a very similar format. So the column is just going to have a wrapping div that applies some style to whatever content we put in it. So the class name will be column and then input or insert that custom class name. We'll use the style object right there. And then we'll put the children inside of it. So whatever content we want to go inside of this div, because the outer div right here is just going to have um, some custom style to actually make that column centered in the row and be a specific type of um, percentage of the screen. So it's going to have a particular um, width associated with it. So we get a nice centered column layout. Okay, so let's set the default props going to be the same thing. So children. Okay, so let's save that. That's looking great. And with those components in place, the row and the column, we should be completely fine to start the home page container. So the home page container is a little bit of code, but it's not too bad. We're just not we're not going to finish the entire thing right here because um, we still need to create the sliders. But you're still going to be able to see a good bit of content here after we add the code in, and then we add the style in as well. So let's import the components we just made. So let's do the row. Let's take the app card and then let's import every row of data from our data file. So we're going to do apps one, apps two. So these are just the rows, right? So apps one is the first row of apps. Um, apps two is going to be the second row and so on. And then let's import our column. Now we're not going to use set state just yet right here. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to start to create our rows with the columns and um, the app cards inside of them. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to do the slider portion later as well as the click handlers and all of that stuff. So let's do our first row. We're going to do row class name and have a class name of highlight row. Then we're going to have a div inside of here. And then inside of this, we're going to map through that first row, um, that first array that has the first row cards in it. So we're going to do apps one, which is the um, first row. Um, all of that data, let's look at that together just so this isn't too confusing. So if you look at index, the first row, right, is an array of objects. And it has all of the different cards for the first row. So we have the TV logo, the movies logo, the apps logo, music, and photos. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to map through it. We're going to cycle through all of the items in that array. We're going to take in the app. And then we're going to return a column and a card. So the column, the class name is going to be column 5. And then the key is going to be app.caption. And then we're going to have the app card inside of this. And the app card is going to have an image for app.image. Scroll down just a little bit. On change is going to be set to null because we haven't created that yet. The type is going to be app.type. And then the caption is going to be app.caption. Okay, and now that we have all of this together, we can go ahead and let's look at this parsing error right here. So we need to go to row JSX. 
And instead of this comma, we need to add a semicolon. So let's save that, go back to the homepage container. Everything looks okay. Um, it's just complaining because we haven't used these actual import statements yet, but we're going to in just a moment. So let's open our browser, refresh the page. And as you can see, nothing has really changed here. Um, so why don't we look ahead and see why that is. So we can see that our div is getting created, right? So we have our highlighted row and there's a centered container and we have all the columns. Um, you know, they're stacked on top of each other and that's not really how the columns are supposed to work, right? That's how. And so the columns are all stacked on top of each other and that's not really how we want them, right? We want them to be next to each other inside of the row. And so we just need to go ahead and create some of these CSS classes so that you can actually get some content onto the screen and see those, those nice cards that we have. So let's close this and let's go back over to our code editor. We're gonna create a CSS file in our style directory. So let's create a style folder for that. And the style folder is gonna have a index.css file. So let's create that. And let's start going ahead and creating some style for this. So we're going to create some custom variables for our colors. And then we're gonna have our primary white, which is gonna be this nice little white that we have. Next thing is we're going to add some default style to the body, so margin is going to be zero. The background is going to be set to whatever the primary background color is. And then the font family is going to be the actual Apple font. So let's do apple-system, blink max system font, and then sans serif. So we're going to create the highlight row class. And it's just gonna have a background color of primary white. And the background color right here will make a little more sense when we create the last page, but basically we created this primary background um, color variable because I wanna be able to change it between the different pages that we go to. So when you're on the app page, it's just gonna be that nice little silver right with all the app cards and then when you click on one of the individual cards and it takes you to that mock login page we're actually going to update this css variable um, in one of our react files and then that's just going to update the color in the background so i thought that would might be the easiest way to do that so now let's create our column class display inline block and then margin with some 15px 10px 0 and 10 px. Let's do our animated column. And the width is going to be 100%. Let's do column 5. So um, this is basically one fifth column and I want the width to be 18%. Let's create our centered container so that the um, rows are actually centered and it has equal space throughout. So width 98% and then margin zero auto scroll down and then the next css class we do is going to be card so this is going to be for the caption card um, react file display inline block width 100 percent so um, the full width of the outer div background size is going to be cover so this is for the image background repeat no repeat and background position of center. And then we're going to set the transition. So this is going to tell what the animation should do. So all the animations should take um, 7 tenths of a second. And the effect we want to do is ease in and out. And then we're going to add some box shadow to this. So let's go ahead and do all the dimensions of that. And then we're going to set the color. And the next thing we're going to do is the border radius. So make it a little more circular, right? We want the edges to be curved. Next thing we're going to do is do the card small class. Um, and we set all of this. Um, I'll kind of show you after we go through this so you have an idea where all this is. But it's in the um, it's a mixture of the card caption class and then the actual home page 
container. Um, so we have column five right here, and you'll see the, let's see if we look at the caption card, you'll see that we have some of these classes here as well. So you have the card caption, and then if we look at app card, we have the animated column and the card, card small. So this is just some CSS that we're gonna put in to make it all look nice. So it should be dot card small for the on hover effect. So when it hovers, we want to do a little bit of an animation effect here. So we're gonna scale it up to um, 1.03. It's gonna make it a little bigger. Then we're going to um, change the box shadow effect so that it's bigger. And then we're gonna do the card caption class. So we'll do position relative, um, Z index is two. Um, let's do the transition again. So all dot seven, uh, ease in and out. And then we're gonna set the font size. I'm gonna do text align, just make it centered. And then we're gonna add some margin so we get some, some nice space outside of the um, border of the content. Next thing we're going to want to do is actually import the CSS classes from this file into our app. So let's open up app.jsx and let's import that style sheet at the, let's see, let's do it at the very top. So we're going to just import from the style container the index.css file. And we'll save that. And now that we've saved that, let's go back over to our window. And you can see that we have a little bit of what we wanted. So that's perfect. We have the highlighted row. Um, this is a little bit centered. And then we have the app cards with the images and the hover effect in the box shadow. So that's really great. Um, I'm excited that we were able to get that far. Um, so why don't we go ahead and just look at this. And you can see that all of our classes are here. You can see um, what I was trying to say was we have this highlighted row right, and inside of this is a centered container. So we're trying to take a little bit off the left and the right there. You can see that there's a little bit of space. And then right here we have the different columns that are side by side within the row. So we did column five, meaning that there's gonna be five columns in this row, and they're gonna all have the exact same width. So um, I hope that makes a little sense. So that's the um, column class that we had. And then the column class, the only job that it had was to basically be this outer div, right, with the column and then column dash five class name. Inside of it was the animation wrapper class, right? So this is a, another div. Uh, I know we're, we're going down the layers, right? So it's getting a little confusing. And all of this is supposed to do is have some extra classes to animate whatever content is inside of it, and then figure out the position um, of this particular div in relation to the window and you know whether it's on the left or the right or the bottom or the top sides of the screen. And then inside of this, um, you know, animation wrapper right here, we have the actual content. So this is the caption card that has our literal card in it with the custom background image. It's got all of our style right here that you can see that we just wrote together. And then we have the caption card that is always there, but um, I just hit it if you are not hovering over it. So I think if we highlight right here, so you can see that the, the text is literally right here. It's just it's transparent, so you can't see it until you do that hover effect. So perfect, that's looking really great. I'm gonna open back up the IDE again, and we can go ahead and finish our homepage container now. So now that we have the first row, why don't we get rid of this homepage text. We can do some space here, and some space here, and now we're just going to go through and do the rest of our rows. So what we can actually do is just copy and paste the first row. So let's paste that in there. And this one's gonna be set up a little differently. So we're gonna have the div for the center container on the outside. And on the inside, we're going to have the row. And I know this is a little confusing. Um, this was just kind of like a little CSX hack that I did because I actually could not get it to center correctly. So if anyone has, you know, um, a better idea on how we can center those rows um, inside of the 
home page, you know, that, that would be great. I would really appreciate that. That's kind of one of the fallbacks of um, this little application that I put together. So now that we're looking at the second row, let's take this out. And we're going to do apps2.map. All of this is going to be exactly the same. And that's going to be our second row. So now we can go ahead and copy and paste this for all of the rows. So this is apps2 now. We're going to rename this to apps3. Scroll down, create a little bit more space. Instead of apps2, let's call this apps4. And then scroll down, create a little space. And instead of calling this apps2, let's call this apps5. Okay, so we're going to save. And we're going to click Google Chrome. We'll close this. And wow, voila, you can see that we have everything here. It's looking good. When you click, um, you know, it throws an error because we haven't we haven't set this on change function, right? So it's trying to catch something and it's saying, hey, that's not a function. So um, you're kind of confusing us. So that's a little broken, but we're going to fix that together. So don't worry. We also don't have a back button implemented, but um, we're going to get to that. And then the last thing we're going to look at is you can see that this isn't really responsive, right? So as we close this, um, you know, the, the window is getting a little weird. Um, if we scale it up, this actually moves to different sides of the screen. And we actually don't want it to work like that, right? Like we want it to look a little nicer. You can see that it's starting to get wobbly and out of place. So why don't we add some media queries that should account for that. So let's do at media when the max width is 1100px. We're going to change the column 5 class a little bit. We're going to make the width 17% instead. And we're going to add another media query for max width at 880px. And we're going to do dot caption card. And we're going to set the font size to something a little smaller. And then the last one is we're going to create a media tag for max width at 700. And this is going to set the card caption font size to be a little smaller, font size 14, and then the column 5 to be width of 15%. Okay, so if we save that and we go back over and we refresh. We should see that it is looking a little better. Uh, obviously, there's this gap of space that is not completely centered and Again, I uh, kind of got tired of the CSS right there and I did struggle a little bit. So I ended up just giving up and um, kind of settling for what we have. But as you can see, we have some hover cards right here. Um, and that's what we set out to do. So let's go ahead and we'll add the rest of the functionality so that when you click it actually does something. It doesn't just break automatically and you also get that nice little login screen and we can do the media slider up top so when you click on the TV movies and all of that you get that nice little carousel um, or slider of all those different cards alright so I think the first thing to do that would probably be the easiest is if we import the photo background picture and this is going to be used when you click on the photos button and it's going to set the background image so let's create a style property or a style variable right here that's going to handle that. And this is going to be all the background image stuff. So let's do URL. And just put in the photo image. So the background color to white. So the background size to cover. background position to top and then background repeat to no repeat so that's looking pretty good to me now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to use state again so let's create a variable for the media type 
So this is going to handle when you click on those media type cards and it can transition the slider to TV shows, movies, um, the photos, the apps, and then the last one was music, right? So that's what this is going to be in charge of. So we're gonna use the use state function and we'll just set the default value to TV. Um, we're going to create a, another state variable for animate. And this is going to be the animation property. So when you click on one of those app cards, you want to say, hey, um, let's set the state for animating to true. And the initial state of this is just going to be null. We're just going to have it set to nothing. So let's create a on-click handler for the media. It's going to take in the type. And then it's just going to set the media type in the state and then this is going to um, choose what type of slider we should show now let's do another on click handler let's do click handler and this is going to take in nothing and all this is going to do is set animate to true so this is saying hey when you click on one of the app cards we know that we want to do that animation transition now. We want to transition to the app page and do um, the little fade in, um, fade in translation effect. And then when you click on one of the media app cards, we want to change it either to TV shows, um, movies, music, and so on, so that the slider gets updated. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to set the on change handler. Instead to null, we're going to set it to media handler. And then instead of null in all of the column or all of the rows that follow, we're going to set the click handler. So I'm going to copy and paste this down to the on change, go down to the on change, go down to the on change. All right, so we're going to save. So save and let's open up Google Chrome and let's start to click one of the buttons. Clicking these does nothing, but at least it doesn't throw an error now. And then if we click on one of the cards right here, so let's click on NBA, not throwing an error. It takes us to the app page like we programmed it to, so that's great. So the React router navigation is working. But we didn't see the animation, and obviously nothing is on this screen. Oh, and instead of the CSS, you know what we need to do? We actually need to use this animate property in order to make it work. So that's my mistake. Let's go back down to apps2.maps, so the second row, and let's send in that animate property to all of these app cards. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna copy and paste and do the same thing for all of these um, rows because all we're doing right here is we're taking the um, data for that row and then we're creating columns for each one. So this is gonna create five app cards for every row. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, copy and paste, alright, so let's save that, let's go back over, and you can see right here that we actually did get our animation, so when you refresh the page you're going to see the animation start to um, scale up and then fade into the frame, and then when we click, it frames out, perfect, that looks great to me. And it did seem like when we click this, it just does fade out. It's not actually moving it. So why don't we go back and look at the animation wrapper, make sure everything's in place. And the reason that this isn't working, if we scroll down in our animation wrapper class, I accidentally wrote transform, transform twice in this fade out. So we need to actually change that to translate. So let's save. We'll go back to our home page. You can see that's fading in. We hover, and now it does the fade out effect as well as translate it. So perfect. Now we can start on the actual sliders and then do the last page and wrap all of this up. So next thing I want to do is go into our components folder and create a new folder called sliders. It's going to be for all the slider components that we create, and they're all going to be basically the exact same thing, really close to the exact same thing. So we're going to create a file, and we're going to do the first one that we do is going to be the TV slider.jsx. So let's go ahead and create that. Let's import 
react, um, take fragment, let's import the caption cards. We're going to take out the TV shows data structure from our data file, and then we're going to take out the column as well. Okay, perfect. So let's create our TV slider functional component. Takes in no props because it's just going to render some data, and that's all it needs to do. So, um, fully presentational component, which makes it really nice and easy to deal with. So, we're going to do TV shows.map. It's going to take in a TV show. So, again, this is the same type of data structure as the rows, it's an array of objects, and those objects have some properties associated with them. So what we want to do here is we want to return um, a column for each iteration that holds a caption card. So let's go ahead and do this. Inside of that we're going to have the caption card. And we'll set the class name to um, the card base CSS class and instead we're going to make it large so that we change the dimensions of it a little bit. We're going to do TV show dot image caption equals TV show dot caption and then on click we're going to do window dot open and it's going to just take us to the link. And then we are going to do blank so that it opens it up in a new tab for us. And we want to close the component right there. Okay, perfect. So I hope you can see that. That should be good to go. And all we need to do right here, we're going to scroll down. Uh, let's add our semicolons. And let's do export default TV slider. And then let's go to the home page. Or excuse me, not the home page. We actually need to create a base slider that is going to transition between all the different types of sliders that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Sorry for skipping a step. We're going to create the file. It's going to be called the media slider. And all this is going to do is it's going to take in the type that we pass it from the home page container. So you click on one of the app cards, right? And it sets the media type. It's going to pass that to this media slider component that we create. And then it's going to create or it's going to render um, different types of these sliders. So if it's TV, it'll render the TV slider. If it's um, a movie, then it'll render the movie slider and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to do import react from react. And then we're going to import the TV slider that we just created. And we're just going to call this media slider. It's going to take in one prop called media type. If the media type equals TV, then we want to return the TV slider else let's just return oh no we don't support that media type yet and then we're going to again do the default prop syntax and the media type is just going to be set to null if you don't pass it in and then we'll do export default slider and that should be good to go. So now we're going to go to the home page. We're going to import our media slider. And then we're going to create an additional row for that at the top right here where we left some space. So let's go ahead and do that. We can actually copy and paste our row syntax right here. And this class name is actually going to be scrollable row. I'm going to set the media type to equal the media type. And then I'm actually going to do the style equals media type equals equals 
the photo. And if it does equal the photo type, then we want to render that style that we have up there for the photo image. And then if not, the style is going to be nothing. So I hope you can see this right here. We have media type equals media type. And then the style, we're going to add some support for the photo media type. Um, and if it is the photo media type, then we want to set the container, this um, scrollable row, just to the background image. And that's it. And if the photo media type isn't photo, then just make the style nothing so that we get the, the slider that we want. Okay. And then we're going to do media slider and then media type equals media type. Oh shoot, I'm sorry, we actually don't need the media type here just for that style property. So let's delete that, let's save. And as you can see, nothing is shown here and that's because of the CSS classes. So we need to go and add our CSS classes. So let's go back over to the style and we're gonna add some classes here to support this. So the first one we're going to do is the scrollable row. So let's go ahead and add some style for this. So we're going to do overflow X, set that to scroll, overflow Y, set that to hidden, white space, no wrap. And then we're going to add some padding in here. We're going to make the height a specific height, so 430px. No matter what, we're going to do the overflow style for IE and set that to none. So this is um, Internet Explorer 10 plus support. And then we're going to do the scroll bar width to none. And this should be for um, Firefox support. So this should be good. Okay, so we have that. And then we're going to do a WebKit property right here. So this is just for the scroll bar. And then we're gonna set the width to zero. And then we're gonna go down to our card classes. And where we have small right underneath it, we want to do um, large classes as well because we just added those in for the TV slider. So we're gonna make the height 350 PX. And then for the on hover effect, we're just going to do transform and then scale it up a little bit. Okay, so let's save that. And then right above here, we're going to do column for class. And do the width to 25%. And the last thing we need to do is, wow, this was such a dummy mistake. So we're going to do return TV slider. And then else if media type equals photo, then we just want to return null because we're going to uh, do that little background image. So let's save that, go on over and perfect. Now you can see that we have both of those button work buttons working. We didn't add support for the movies, apps, or music yet, and that's perfectly fine. We're gonna do that together. And if we go over and we scroll through, we can see that this is working just as expected. And when we click on this, great, we're getting our trailer and our link in the new tab, so everything's working perfectly. Now let's go ahead and take this time to finish the rest of the sliders. Now these sliders all look just about the exact same except a little bit of a tweaking to their style and class names. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the TV slider and go through all of these um, extra sliders and then change as necessary. So let's do the movie slider first. Gonna copy and paste this. We're going to take the movies this time. And then we're gonna replace TV shows with movies. We're gonna replace TV show with um, movie as well. So all instances of this, let's just replace it to movie. Okay, that's looking good. And then for the column, we want the style to be set here instead. And we're just going to set the width to 250. All right, so everything else checks out right there.
and we're going to do export default movie slider and then we're going to rename the functional component right here okay perfect so that's looking good let's copy and paste this and let's create the last um, or the other two sliders so the next one we can do music slider JSX gonna copy and paste um, this time we're going to take the songs data structure and they're all the same thing right so this is just an array of objects and you can look at this data file and and uh, look more at that if you're curious to see how it's um, how it's set up so we're gonna do the music slider replace that down here as well we're gonna change movies to songs and then all references of movie to songs so let's go ahead and do that just copy and paste that in there and then the key is going to be song.title and then the caption is going to be a little different here so we're going to do um, a custom caption that we create together and then the key is just going to be the song dot title here as well although this isn't necessary okay and then let's create our custom caption so it's going to be a combination of the song title and then the song artist so let's do song dot title by song dot artist and great that's all we're gonna do there so let's save and copy and paste one more time and the last one we're gonna do is the app store slider copy and paste this and create our or call this the app store slider we're gonna take in the um, app stores data structure we're going to replace it with songs and just go through this and replace everything. Can remove the caption. The key is going to be the same as the other. So caption. Style. We want to make this a little different. So it's going to be 60%. Image is going to be app store image and then caption. I'm going to be app store caption. And I actually removed the on-click handler here. You can change it to something if you want, you know, feel free. Um, but for now, the um, click functionality there just doesn't do anything. So we're going to export default the app store slider. And then the next step is to actually add them in here. So let's import the app store slider. And then we'll render them based on, you know, whatever that media type is that gets passed to us when we click those um, cards in the home page. So then we'll do movie slider and then music slider. Okay, and now we're just gonna set everything up um, like the rest of it. So we're gonna do else if media type equals the movie. Then we're gonna return the movie slider. If it's the app store, we'll return the app slider. And then if it's the music slider, we'll return, uh, or if it's the music type, then we're going to return the music slider. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. So we'll save this and see what we get. All right, that's looking good. And then you should be able to scroll if you do your two right fingers on the mouse pad or you know whatever operating system you have, but I have a Mac, so that's what I'm doing. And then we can see that we have the apps. We have the music, so that's looking great. And then when we click, we get... All right, perfect, great song. I love that song, <laughs> it's so good. Okay, so this is great. Um, you know, at the very least, if you made it this far, then you can just leave it at this and you at least have something to play with. Um, the last thing that we're going to do is finish up the style and then do that last little loading screen um, as well as the app page 
the individual you know app login pages. So this is looking good to me. We can close all of these. Okay, so we are going to create a component for that informational message that's on the uh, little mock login page. So let's go ahead and do that first. Um, we can just call it message.jsx. We're going to do import react from react. And we're going to do const message. And it's going to take in a message, basically. And this is going to be another wrapper class. So um, that's why I put in the wrappers folder. And we're going to do const style. And it's just going to have all of this custom style in there. So we're going to do inline block. I'm going to add some padding. We're going to add um, border radius 3 here. We're going to do the box shadow. And this is going to give it just a nice little dark effect. Okay, that's looking good. And then the background color is just going to be white. And then we're going to set the color of the text to this little um, bluish color. All right, that's looking good. And then all this is going to do is return that wrapper div. And it's going to have a paragraph in it that prints the message. And that's it. That's all we need to do there. So let's do info message and then add the default props. And then we're going to do message is your message so that they have an idea like, hey, you're supposed to add a message prop here. Um, why don't you go ahead and do that if you forgot? Okay, so we'll change that back to message. Okay, and that's looking perfect to me. So we should go into our app page container now. And we're going to start to make use of a lot of this stuff. So, and then the last one we want is the user's data structure from our data file. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do um, an object for some style. So this is going to be the row style. It's going to be really simple. We just add um, some text align in the center. And then we want margin top to be 20. Okay, so app container actually takes in um, a good deal of props. So the main one it takes in is um, location, right? And I'm going to do some deep, <laughs> some nested destructuring here. So we know that it has a props.location variable, right? So I'm going to take that out right here. Now the next level within that is state. So I'm going to take that um, right here with this additional structure. So on the first level, it's that. Um, on a deeper level, though, it's props.location.state. So I'm going to destructure um, that state from it. And then on an even deeper level, <laughs> it's um, props.location.state.image and then props.location.state state.caption. So I'm just going to go ahead and destructure all of that right here. So we have image and then caption. Okay, perfect. So I know that looks really ugly, but I thought that, um, you know, this is a nice thing to know. You can destructure multiple levels if it's in um, the following syntax. So you just do the colon and then you say whatever you want to take out of it and you can just keep nesting on and on like that. So we know that the base level is location. I know that there's something deeper within this uh, first level of destructuring, so I can put a little colon here and then target the next um, level of destructuring, which would be state. So you could just take all this out um, and just take the state out of it. So you could delete this portion and just take state. That would be fine as well. But we're going to do it this way so that you don't have to take out image and caption on another line. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some array destructuring. We're going to be using useState to set up some loading uh, state. 
So the use state um, is going to be true. So the page is loading by default. Um, should it show the message? So it only shows the message when you click on the little user card. So we want to say that the initial state for this is false. And then the background color. So this is um, tying back into what I was saying earlier about, hey, I want to be able to update the um, background color for our app on certain pages. So if we scroll back up to the top, we have this primary background color and this page right here is going to use this set background color um, function in order to update that variable property um, to a different color. It's going to be like a little nicer black when we get to this page, similar to what Netflix has. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, great. And now we are ready to write our use effect function and more on this later in a PowerPoint, so don't worry if um, all of this doesn't make sense right now. Um, I promise you it will after I go over the, the PowerPoint with you. So let's go ahead and code this out first. Um, the use effect is only going to rerun um, with the background color variable or the state um, variable for background color. So I only want it to rerun these functions when when that gets updated, so const set color. Um, this is going to be an inner function, so it just takes in the color, right? And this is going to run on component did mount and also on um, component did update. So let's do document dot document element dot style dot set property. So this is just going to set our custom CSS property that we had set together. Um, so it's dash 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 primary dash background and then color. Okay, so let's make sure that you guys can actually see that. So we're just going to update our custom background property when this component mounts so it gets set to the nice dark color right here. Okay, so that's looking good. And then we're going to call the set state so that the state actually has the color. So we're going to do set color. Um, this is called again on component did mount and component did update. And then set timeout. We're going to do set loading to false. And this is going to wait two seconds. So so let's do set color and we're going to set this back to our nice gray color. So as you're leaving this page, we need it to update that custom um, primary color, that custom primary color attribute in our style file, because if it doesn't, then it's going to remain on that black color. So that's why we call set color one more time when the component unmounts. All right, next we're going to do our on click handler. And you set show message to true. So just when you click on one of the icon cards, let's show that message. Let's update the state. So now we're going to do our loading stuff. So let's do if the state is loading, then we're going to return a fragment. Oh, you know what? We actually don't need the fragment right there. I just, I just realized that. So we're going to do div. And then inside of that, it's going to have a div with the class name of loader so we haven't set this up yet but we're going to add that class name is going to be set to full background also have not set this this is going to set the background image on the loading screen and then the style is going to be the background image of whatever card they click on so you know it could be like the YouTube is the background of this loading this loading screen. It could be Netflix image is the background. So we want to make this dynamic. So it's better to just do this as some inline style right here. And then it's going to be set to the image that we just structure out. Okay, it's looking good. And then we'll scroll down and get rid of this and do our last little bit of code. Um, for our component. Let's 
do class name equals app page. We'll have a link um, as the back button. Class name is going to be back arrow. And then I'm actually just going to do a little um, HTML code right here to do the back arrow. I didn't actually want to have to do icons. So that's why you see this weird little gibberish right here that you're about to see. So and sign pound 8592 is what we're going to have right there. And that'll do the back arrow that points to the left. Let's do our p tag. So text align center, and then font size is going to be 40. And then we can just do who's watching, and then it's going to render the caption, which is going to be the name of whatever app they they click. So it'll either be Netflix, YouTube, HBO Go, um, Hulu, anything like that. So let's create our row right here to finally finish all of this up. Now let's input that row style. And then let's map through our users. So we can show all those user cards or user blocks, um, however you would like to <laughs> refer to it. It doesn't really matter either way. Um, let's do column. And then we're going to set the class name to column eight and then key to user dot caption. Perfect. Okay, and then caption card is gonna follow the exact same syntax. So we need it to give it that custom class name so that um, our CSS file styles it appropriately. And then we do our on click handler. So we're gonna do on click and then image is going to be whatever the image property is for this specific iteration um, through our map call. And then we're going to do caption, user.caption, so the specific caption attribute, and then key. Key we actually don't need here. You actually only need key on the outermost um, element, I think. If I am correct, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll test it, um, but obviously the key is going to be set to the caption because I made all the usernames unique. And it's really important that you set the key um, to some uh, unique identifier when you're when you're creating um, lists or when you're iterating through lists um, that's going to render some JSX to your application because it's really important to be able to um, uniquely identify those elements in your application so that you can use them later and style them specifically or get information out of them for whatever you might need. Um, okay, and then the last one we're gonna do is one more row. It's gonna have that row style again. And we'll do show message. And if it says to show the message, then I mean, let's show the message. So we'll do, thank you for logging in is what our message content is gonna be that we pass to this component. And then if it's not, um, if the show message state is not set to true, then just return null because we don't care and you can just do whatever you want here. So let's do app container or app page container, sorry. Um, and then we're gonna set our default props because this makes your code a lot more readable. Um, I really wish that everyone would do this. I thought it was really stupid at the beginning, but it's actually really nice because it gives people a little br blueprint on like, hey, what do I need to pass to this component? And um, if I don't pass these things, what are they gonna be set to by default? Um, so that's really, that's really important. It's really nice plus bonus to have if um, you're working alongside other people and you have to read their code. Uh, this gives you a little cheat sheet on how the component's supposed to work. Okay, perfect. So we did add some new class names right here. So why don't we go ahead and add those in our index.css and everything should be good. And then we'll finish up with some responsive media queries. But if we go back here and we click on one of these, we should see, oh, sorry, not the top row. 
Um, those are still looking good. But if we click on NBC, for example, we should see that there is nothing here. Um, <laughs> so everything looks really ugly, right? Um, this is barely, you can barely see it. There's nothing here. Um, when I click, there's literally nothing there. You can see like the little um, boxes, right? But there's no content within them um, because of our CSS classes. So nothing's really happening there. And then that arrow was so tiny. I mean, I could barely even see it. Um, we can try one more time and see if there's, yeah, you can see it, but I mean, it looks, it looks crappy, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead to our index.css file and let's add in those last classes. Okay, so let's scroll down and under column, we're going to do column eight. I'm going to make our width 12%. And then we're going to scroll down a little more and underneath the card caption, we're going to create our user card class that we had. So the height on these is going to be 150 px. The background size is going to be cover. And then on hover, we're just going to do our transform effect again. So we're going to scale it up, uh, you know, just a little bit. So 1.30, perfect. We need to create our full background class. So um, on that loading spinner page, it actually is doing something cool. So let's do position relative. Let's do height, um, full size of the viewport. Okay, and then the position is just gonna be in the center. And then we're just going to text align everything in the center. So that's for the loading spinner that's gonna go inside of it. So this one's really easy. We're just gonna do keyframes and call it the spin animation. So we're gonna do 0% transform rotate zero degrees. Now I know you're looking at this and you're like, oh wow, like if we could do keyframes straight from <clears throat> the CSS file right here like you're doing right now for the um, spinning loader then why don't we just do that for the caption or for the app cards that you had the little caption cards that were um, nested inside of the animation wrapper and the main reason for that is because we injected dynamic style into the keyframes animation so that's why we did it with the style components library instead of how we're doing it right here Okay, so now the next one is a little longer, so let's do um, dot loader. We're going to make the position absolute and do bottom 15px display inline block, do border 4px solid, and this is going to be our primary white color. Yeah, border radius, do border top, and do width of 60, and then height of 60, and then we're going to do the WebKit animation property, and we're going to set it to our spin um keyframes that we did right there and then we're going to make it linear and then just do it infinitely and then the animation for other browsers that don't support webkit we're just going to set it to the same thing so that they can pick it up so these two are just for different browsers not all of them support webkit <clears throat> okay and then we only have three more classes to do and then our media queries so let's do app page height 100 vh and then the color is going to be white so that's the color of the text on the app page and then the back arrow so this one's a little longer because we got to remove a bunch of annoying style that comes by default for anchor tags or link tags um, in CSS like HTML tags by default so let's do all this let's 
add our own margin to it. And then let's make it really big so that it stands out. And then let's do a transition that just translates it a little bit when you hover over. Okay, so that transition is going to take a little less than a second. And then on hover, um, this is where we're going to do our transform. And we're going to move it to the left. And I'm going to do that by doing translate X and then moving it. Um, to the left by eight pixels. So on the X plane, um, X is left and right, and then Y would be up and down, uh, obviously. Um, you guys probably knew that. <laughs> okay, so don't need me to explain uh, whatever that would be, like graph theory or coordinates or whatever. Um, okay, so last thing I want to do while we're here is just add on to our media query so that this all... Um, is a little more responsive, you know, it's probably not completely responsive, but that's okay. It's just supposed to be a learning experience. Um, I'm still so bad at making things responsive. So at the end, I kind of wanted to go over the flaws of this application and things that I really struggled with and wanted to see if, um, you know, maybe anyone had a better idea on how to do it. Um, so we'll go over that at the end, but um, yeah, I, I know that this is not the <laughs> most amazing responsive website of all time. So let's add our column eight, um, and then let's do our user card at the end. And then we're going to set the height to uh, custom height right there. And I think that should about do it. So let's save this. And let's open up our browser. And let's click on any of these logo cards. Let's do Verb. I really like their application. So we have the animation, we have the loading screen, and the spinner at the bottom. Um, now we have our caption with the custom app card information or title. And then we have all of the different user cards. And they scale up a little bit, you know, not a lot. It's barely noticeable. To be honest, I wonder if it's even doing it. I'm trying to. I actually don't think it's doing it. <laughs> so let me check. And it wasn't doing it. It's because I uh, wrote user card twice without the hover property. So add the transform one with hover. Let's say it one more time. And perfect. Now you can see that the hover effect is there. It scales it up a tiny bit, not much. And it also shows the uh, username. We click, we get our nice little informational message, perfect. And then when we hover over the back arrow, it is going to the left a little bit. So it animates a little bit as well. All right, perfect. And that's about all that I wanted to show for this. We can see that this is a little more responsive, right? So as you make it big and wide, it does just fit a little more nicely on the page than it would have if we didn't have those media queries. It all fits in one row. And then if we were to do this, also uh, it fits a little better. This obviously not here. <laughs> so as you know, uh, not perfect by any means, but at least it's a little more responsive, but not completely. Okay guys, and last thing that I want us to go through is the three containers that we set up that are using the use state, use ref, and use effect hooks um, that were just introduced into React 16.8, I think, uh, just a little bit ago, you know, a couple months ago. So um, we're going to switch over to a PowerPoint slide and go through these three files. So we have the home page container, the app page container, and the app card container. So for the first container that we're going to look at, we're going to look at the home page container. And this has everything that is on the home page with all of the app cards, right? So we used, um, the first thing we used was use state. And now what use state does is it returns two, two different items to you, um, or it returns an array. Um, of two items and the two items it returns in the array is a variable that you're going to use just like any state variable that you would have um, in the old versions of react that don't have the use state that just use this dot set state 
And then it returns a function as well for you to update that state. Now, most people will always just call it set, whatever the state is, um, but just know that it is updating it. Um, and then in addition to that, you give it an initial state value for this variable on the left. So let's walk through this line right here on line 18. So we call use state, and we set the initial state to TV. And what that's gonna return us is an array of two items, just like we said, a variable and a function. And so I'm going to just do some destructuring right here so that I don't have to, um, you know, do like array um, destructure, or I don't have to like set these variables to the arrays and the, or the items in the array. So like array dot, or array zero, and then array position one, things like that. This is gonna make it a little simpler on us. So we're gonna take media type, which is the actual variable, um, and that holds the TV value. And then we're going to have the set media type function, and that's going to allow us to update this media type value to the different types of media we have. So if you remember on the highlight row right here, that's where this is being used. So we have TV, as you can see, so that's the initial state, that's why this is shown um, at the very beginning every single time, right? So these are all TV shows. And when you click, it calls the set media type handler and it will change what our media type is. So why don't we flip on back? So we have movies, apps, blah, blah, blah. Let's go back over. You can see that for the media slider, we give it the media type. And when the um, app card is clicked, we give it the media handler, which is set up right here. So let's go through that. Um, it's gonna make a, a little bit more sense, but um, we do the same thing for use state right here. So that's perfect. That's for the animation property for set state. And then we have two on-click handlers that basically mimic set state in React 16.7 before hooks were introduced. So let's go over our media handler. Now that's gonna take in a type and it's simply going to set the media type that we have, our media type variable, to whatever type we pass it. So right here um, in this data structure for the first row, apps one, you can see that in the data file if you'd like. Um, we have a property of the objects that we're mapping through right here that you can see. Um, and the type is set to TV, movies, apps, uh, music, and then a photo. So that's what's gonna be sent right here to the media handler. Okay, so we go and we click one of these, right? So I have TV, movies, and apps, and music as the type. So I'm on music and we see all the media um, that relates to music right here. Now if I go back, we can see that the media slider is getting the media type from our state right here, from our use state hook. Um, and we are using that right here for media type. So that is the variable right here. And you can just think of that as destructuring state from what you would do with um, React 16.7. So th that's all, all a little more simplified right here. Okay, now the next one we're gonna go over is the app card. So that's the component that was rendered in here, right? So all the cards with the captions. So let's go over here, you can see app card. It's a little more confusing, right? Because we're using use ref, use state, and use effect. Um, and then we also have this weird, you know, use effect function right here. So let's take a look at that. Now for the app card, um, let's go over uh, line seven. So inside of this functional component, we have use ref. Now the only thing you need to know about use ref is it's going to give us a way to understand where the app card is positioned on the screen. So if I'm gonna go up in the PowerPoint, this is what our home page looks like, right? So I'm gonna go over here, we have all these cards, and if you think about the window and splitting it up into four quadrants, it would more or less look something like this, okay? So this is what happens. There's an app card, and we need to get a reference to each of the positions of all of these cards in the window so that I can tell, okay, it's in the top right corner, so I know it's going to go to the top right direction. It's in this top left space right here, so I know it's gonna to go to the top left. So that's the only reason we used use ref, and that's really all you need to know about it, just so we could get its position in the um, document or the window. All right, now let's go back. We have something that we're uh, already familiar with. Oh, and just one more thing, uh, for use ref, you set it to null, that's just kind of commonplace, so um, you can probably set it to other things, but I'm just not sure, uh, so I always just use null. The next thing is we have our use state and we're familiar with that. So this just sets the direction right. Um, 
I want the card to go to the top right corner, top left, um, and so on and so forth. All right, so now what we're going to go over is the use effect function, and what it does is it's a it's a simplification of a bunch of different React lifecycle methods that we had to define um, individually before, but now we can combine it into this use effect um, function right here. So that's really cool. It's uh, it makes it a lot more straightforward and um, it's pretty easy to use. So it takes in a function as the first parameter and a optional parameter that it takes in is an array. Now, if you don't specify this array right here as the second parameter, then all of this code right here, um, it gets rerun every single time um, the component re-renders or it receives new props. So I'm going to go over that um, right now. So just know that if you send in a empty array, then this code is only going to be executed on component did mount and component will unmount. Because what you're basically saying is say, I don't want you to listen for any change in props or any re-renders. Um, just take this blank array syntax and you're going to know that I only want you to run this when the component mounts and right before it unmounts. Now right here you can see we have the array obviously and we put a ref inside of it. And the ref, what we're saying right here is, hey, I want you for this use effect that um, executes our component did mount, component did update, and component will unmount, I want you to only rerun this stuff when the ref changes from our current prop. So when the next props, or so when the um, next ref value comes to us, right, from our use ref, um, our kind of state-like object right there, then I want you to rerun all of this so we can get the dimensions again. So this might make a little more sense if we go back up right here. So every time you resize the window, right? Um, so when we're resizing the window, I am going to assume that sometimes the um, card changes its position. And so when it does, we want you to set the um, direction again to see if we need to change it to the top left, top bottom, blah, blah, blah as the card gets resized and all of that or as the window gets resized excuse me because it could get really big and then you can see that the directions change right so it might go to one side of the screen as opposed to another so that's all that gonna that's all that this uh, says is it's telling you when you should run this use effect function and then um, we can look at the actual code right here okay so these two parts refer to component did mount and component did update. So when the component mounts, you first uh, establish the set dimensions function and then you call it right. So we set the direction uh, based on the um, position of the app card and then we add an event listener. So that's pretty easy. Now, whenever the ref changes, right? Whenever the window gets repositioned, um, then we need to do all of this again and set the dimensions again one more time. Um, and it's unfortunately also going to add this event listener again, um, I'm pretty sure. So uh, it should be split up into two use effect functions, but I'm just too lazy. I'm just not doing that. <laughs> okay, and then the last part is component will unmount. So if you want something to happen on component will unmount, then you can add this return syntax. And what it will do is execute the component will unmount logic that you have. So you just do return empty function, um, and then we're going to remove that event listener because that's our cleanup that we want to do. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the next file, which is going to be our app page container. This one is basically everything that we went over, but let's go over it one more time, or let's go over it just so the point kind of sticks in your head. So this is the app page container. This is the page that has that little mock login um, design to it and all the user cards and that little message when you click on one of the user cards. So as you can see at the top, we did the same exact thing that we did in the other two previous components. So we do use state, we set some initial state for the variable that's on the left, right? So these are our state variables. And then these are our setters for the functions um, that are going to allow us to update that variable value. Now below we have something similar again, we have use effect. Um, and we can see that there are some uh, logic right here. So for the set color, uh, we define a function to set the color of the document, right? So 
why don't we go over and click this and you can see that the color is changed right here right um, we have this little blackish little color and when we go back we have the kind of lightish gray color and that's what this use effect is for it's just for updating the color of our document so what happens is we call set color when the component mounts right so this is all it's going to do is update the document style property the custom one that we have um, in our CSS class for the background of our application and then set that and then set the background state variable right there now after that it's going to set is loading to false and then do a little timeout okay perfect and then also whenever the props change or the state changes and the only state that we're listening for is background color so whenever background color changes then we're gonna rerun the this block of code right here component did mount and component did update um, and then when the component unmounts we're going to return a function and it's going to set the color back to our, um, excuse me, it's going to set it back to that light gray. So when you navigate away from the page, it sets it back to silver um, and it's not black anymore. So if I kind of demonstrate that to you right here, we'll take this out, we'll comment it out and I'll save it. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're going to click here. Use effect is running, it set component um, is loading to false, and then it set the background color of our document, as well as the state here to black. And when we navigate back, you can see that it's still black and we don't want that at all, right? Like that's not what we want at all. But then you can see when we refresh, it sets it back to silver. Now, why is that? That's because in our CSS file, we set it to silver, right? So it's pulling it from the CSS file first, and then when we navigate to this component, it sets it back for us, okay? So that's what's going on. We're gonna keep that component will on mount um, right there. And you can see all the logic right here. And all we do is listen for that background color. Whenever this um, state gets updated, then we want to rerun this, this logic right here. And then at the very bottom, you can see that on this click handler, we use the um, set show message, which is right here. And that's just equivalent to set state. All right, perfect. So that should just about do it for kind of wrapping up and giving a little bit of a breakdown on some of the code that we wrote. And if I pop on over to our application, um, some of the stuff that we did do um, not so well is obviously the responsiveness, right? So I didn't spend too much of uh, a time on it. I'm not really good at responsivity uh, that well. So if anyone uh, wants to come ahead and fix this and tell me what I did wrong, that would be much appreciated. So that's a, a little crappy after effect right there. And then if we go back, you can also see that it's not really centered, right? So as you move the screen, sometimes uh, you know, it looks more centered. The cards obviously are not scaled or um, responsive or anything like that. I wasn't going to take the time to do that. <laughs> uh, it was going to take kind of a long time. And then the one thing that's super annoying to me is that it flickers, right? So when you hover over any of these cards, it flickers. And I actually spent a couple of hours trying to fix this, but I was not able to. It has something to do with like the smooth the smoothing transition or something like that or there's some type of effect or CSS property you can do to fix it but I tried a bunch that I found on Stack Overflow and I could not fix any of them so um, or none of them would work so if you're able to figure that out you know what I did wrong please uh, leave something in the comment section tell me uh, where I suck <laughs> and, and what I did wrong and that'd be great Okay, so that's awesome. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, the next video is definitely going to be something um, that I think you'll all enjoy. I'm going to try to make an application or you know a little mock app that uh, is something that you can show off for you know your portfolio or just get a little bit of more intimate knowledge with code and just have something cool and fun to play with.